was originally built in 1893 and uh, it's been lovingly kept up ever since by members of the same family. The house sits on over 200 acres that used to belong to the Washoe Indians. Used to belong. And there's another 1,200 acres for sale right up against this property. Is that an outhouse I saw out in back? Yes. Very quaint. Does it work? I don't know. I suppose someone would have to test it. It's perfect. I'll take it. Las Vegas International Airport by a private jet at 9.47 a.m. on Friday. And I have arranged for a limousine to pick us up on the tarmac. I love the word tarmac. I don't know why. Then we'll be driven to the Bellagio Hotel and escorted to our suites where I have signed us all up for spa treatments. Oh, this sounds good. <laughs> Vicky, you and I will get the paraffin pedicure followed by a champagne mud wrap. Matt, you and Charles will get a Zen garden massage followed by a French body polish. I've never had my body polished before. Oh, no, that's not true. Remember the time you passed out on the hood of my car and we drove you through the car wash? Correct. That was a polish. Correct. <laughs> okay, well, after that, I have ordered us a catered lunch in our suites followed by two hours in the casino, a game of tennis, a quick shower, and then off to dinner at Olive's before going to see Elton John. <gasps> well, that's perfect because we're going to have something to celebrate. Celebrate? Vicky, my love, the time that we have spent together has been like the taste of a delicious meal. But as you know, I'm a man of appetite, and a taste is no longer enough for me. So I'd like to ask you in front of our two dearest friends. Will you be my main course? Yes. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, so <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Right on time. You, you must teach me how you do that without a watch. Will you live on wash your land long enough? You'll be able to do that, too. Hmm. How long would it take? Most people, 20 years. You? 20 years. I think I'll keep my watch. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, we, we got four front row seats. Yeah, you, you gonna join us there? Good, meet us in the lobby at 7. Okay. So what's the deal with last night? Deal? You didn't look like you were too happy for Vicky and I. I'm happy for you. Really. It's, seriously, it's me. You and Linda not getting along? No, we're getting along just fine. It's just that we've only been going out a couple of months. So what's the problem? Well, Linda was my mother's idea. And if she has her way, she will have us following you and Vicky down the aisle. Linda's the boss's daughter, Mr. Future Partner. What's not to love? Oh. <laughs> 
Hi, Mom. What's up? Well, apparently your grandfather is back from his travels. Have you heard from him? Uh, no, Grandpa never calls me. Why, is something wrong? Well, the lunatic has bought a log cabin. No electricity, no telephone. Well, that doesn't really sound that crazy for Grandpa. Well, your father and I are very concerned. Why don't you come over and have some lunch with us? We could use the company. Okay, I'll see you in a little while. Goodbye. Bye. Your father and I have an important family matter to discuss with you. It's about your grandfather. Okay. When he was buying his shack in the woods, I thought, well, this is great. He's going to finally settle down. And, well, we had a call from our attorney this morning, and my father is planning on buying the land next to his house. 1,200 acres. 1,200? That's got to cost a fortune. There will be nothing left if we don't do something. Well, I can't believe that he's going to force me to do this. Mom, what is it? Well... When your grandfather was traveling, he made me beneficiary of his estate. And, well, knowing that he was unstable, your father and I took the liberty of having these papers drawn up. Puts all of grandpa's assets into a trust, and he can't get to them unless I approve. I mean, he may want to squander away all the family money. It doesn't mean that I have to let him. Yes, the Sannies. The way I drew those up, if he refuses to sign, we can force him to respond at a competency hearing. Yikes. You get ugly. So who's going to serve him? I'm so lost, I just know it. I know it. to know where Yoder is, would you? Uh, Mom said you lived out in the woods. I didn't realize you lived in the woods. Other than the nose, you could call it a self-portrait. What is it? It's called a ganache. Is this who I think this is? Could this be? Oh! Hi, Grandpa. How you doing? Oh. <laughs> Great! Oh, terrific! Yeah. Oh, call me Jack. We're both adults now. Okay, Jack. Hmm? Here, let me... Oh, no, no, it's okay. I've got it. I, I insist. I'm so glad that you're the one who came to visit me. You are? Hmm. So you know I am here then. What a beauty. Is that yours? Yeah, I just got it. Oh, what? Uh, Mom and Dad were really worried about you. Me? Why? Well, they've just been hearing some disturbing things, you know, and uh -huh. you know, they wanted me to come out and check on you, make sure everything was okay. Magnificent interior. Now, turn it on. Let me hear how this baby sounds. Sure. I used to have one of these. Did you know that? Uh, no, I didn't. What kind of engine you got under here? Honestly, I don't know. Pop the hood, let me look.
Jack. You got those fancy keys with this thing, too? You know, the kind of open the hood, close the hood, open the trunk, close the trunk. It was this. Yeah. Yeah. That's them. <laughs> Look at these things work. My God. Isn't that wonderful? We didn't have this when I had a BMW. Jack? What'd you do to my car? Where are you going? I'm going for a walk in the woods. You gotta be kidding me. Like that? You know, I can't be 100% sure, but I think so. Yeah, that's a fuel pump relay. No way you're gonna move that pump without a fuel pump relay. Okay, I'll take one, please. I need a deposit to order it. Well, how long will it take to get it in? I'm going into Pembroke Bar to pick up some parts. I have that pump in for you by tomorrow noon. Look, I'm also gonna need my car rekey, okay? Well, that's uh, a little trickier than a fuel pump relay. I'll ask about a spare when I'm in Pembroke. Look, when you get the key and the spare parts, could you drive it out to Jack Green's place at West Road and install it for me? You relative to Jack's? Afraid so. Hello? Mom. Hey, it's me. Hi, sweetie. How's it going? Look, things have not turned out as we planned. Yeah, your father? Nuts. He, he took my keys and my fuel pump relay. What's a fuel pump relay? I, I don't know. It's something that makes a car go. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on a second, honey. Linda, that's the bad thing. I'm the bad thing. It's bad thing. Mom, why are you talking to Linda? Don't yell. Hi, honey. Hi, I wasn't aware that I needed fabric. Did you talk to Grandpa about the papers? Grandpa is, Mom, I'm not allowed to call him that. It's Jack. My papers are locked in my car, and my buddy Jack has the keys. You have to get him to sign those papers. Otherwise, he still has control of the money. Yeah, I'm aware of that, Mom. But you know what? The papers are just a formality at this point. I'd be perfectly willing to go to court and testify that this guy's cheese has definitely slipped off his cracker. Well, what are you going to do? What choice do I have? The parts don't get in until tomorrow, and the nearest hotel's like a light year away. I think I have to go out to Jackson, beg him to let me stay. Well, I'm sure that you'll work it out, sweetie. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <sighs> Where were we? This, this one's cute, too. This is very pretty. but I have no place to go. Yeah? Well, I can make up a couple places. Ooh. Come on, Jack. Let me in. Come on, look, look. I had a long drive. Plus, I, I had to walk all the way to town and back. Really? You had to walk almost two whole miles? Oh, come on. Mm. I once walked across the Negev on foot with only one liter of water and two macaroons. Go away. No, no, I'm staying right here on this porch until you let me in. No, you're not. You'll wait 10 minutes and get fed up and walk right back to town. Your generation's got no staying power. Ooh, come on, at least give me my keys so I can get some stuff out of my car. Like what? Like clothes, stuff like that. That's another problem with your generation. You buy too many articles of clothing saturated with the sweat of third world poor. Thanks, Grandpa.
That'd be an empty bucket. You don't expect me to use the bathroom in that, do you? Don't be disgusting. There's an outhouse out back if you need one. Thought you might be hungry. I am. Behind a house on up the hill, there's a slew of berry bushes. You go on up there, fill your bucket with them, you'll have a rewarding breakfast. I can't eat berries for breakfast. You know those flat teeth at the back of your mouth? Those are designed to grind grains and berries. You ought to give them a shot. No, oh, I can't do that. Fine, don't. There's no sauce in the world like hunger. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Ow. It's uphill. It's all uphill. I hope these aren't poisonous. There's no sauce in the world like hunger. Fleming one, pine cones zero. Sorry, this is my grandfather's place. Yeah. Oh, you must be Matt. Hi. So nice to meet you. I'm Gwen Blitzer. Matt Fleming. How did you know my name? Yard is a really small town, you know. You whisper something in the john and people know about it on Main Street before the water's done going down. Beautiful imagery. <laughs> you work for my grandfather or something? Yeah, I deliver food to him. Was one of my best customers since he has no electricity, no fridge. So he always has to order fresh. He's a really nice man. It's a bit of a loner, though. Isn't that the common description for most serial killers? <laughs> How did you get in here? The door was open. It always is. The house is just always open? Yes. Did Luke get your fuel pump relay thing? How do you know about... Right, toilet water. Look, I know you're busy, but you wouldn't happen to be driving into town, would you? 
Yeah. You ready? Come on. I'm telling you, I'd give it up. It's not going to work. Yeah, well, you people need to invest in a couple of cellular towers. Sounds pretty. No thanks. So, how long have you lived in Yoder? My whole life. Which is like, what, 13, 14 years? You can just come out and ask me how old I am. How old are you? I'm 28. Really? You seem a lot younger. How old are you? 30. Really? Yeah. You seem a lot older. Ouch. So, how are you liking your visit to Yoder so far? Oh, well, considering that I'm being held hostage by my grandfather, I love it. Look. Look at the woods. They're so beautiful. You should really take a slow walk through there sometime. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I just came to do what I have to do, and I'm going to get out of this town as fast as I can. No offense. Oh, no, that's okay. People around here don't have much nice to say about Los Angeles either. Yeah, I bet they don't. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Uh, Luke. Look, I thought you said my car was going to be ready by noon. Hello? I can't wait until sundown, let alone another day. Hello? Uh, hey, babe, yes. I need you to send me some of my stuff, okay? Look, I need you to send it to uh, Leland Auto Parts, Main Street, Yoder, California. You're going to have to find the zip yourself. My extra keys are in my desk, top drawer. So, I guess there goes our trip to Vegas, huh? Yeah, what a shame, huh? I mean, this is ridiculous. We had plans. We have tickets. We have yeah. reservations. What am I supposed to tell Charles and Vicky? That it's not my fault. Look, look, why don't you guys just go on without me? I don't want to do that. Look, I'll just stay here at your place and throw away more of your stuff. Throw out my stuff? You about ready? Yeah, look, babe, I gotta go. There's somebody here gonna give me a ride back out to my grandfather's, okay? But you've been there only one day and you already made a friend? Just a local guy, uh, Ralph something. Just a second. Look, babe, I gotta go. Wait, wait, what does this Ralph do? He's just simple folk, you know? He, he tends to the crops, he, he slots the pigs, you know the drill. Look, just overnight me my stuff and I will get out of here and get back home as soon as I possibly can, I promise. Send me the keys. What? Think an old man? Can't do any physical labor? No, no, it's just that I didn't think the authorities would be okay with you handling sharp objects. Well, you want a nice answer? You haven't exactly been a gracious host. Never invited you. Did you ever think of that? Yeah, I did. Every single second I wasn't sleeping on your porch last night. Look, at, at this point, if you'll just give me my keys, my fuel pump relay. I'll get out of here. No, I won't help you poison the air with your Bavarian filth machine. Okay, well then, I guess I'm going to be here one more night. And that means that you and I have to make the best of it. Looks that way. Swell. You at least have a shower I can use. You can uh, shower after we get back. Back from where? Our walk. <laughs> What's this, in case we encounter the enemy? Only a fool walks into the woods without at least a knife, and that's a good one. They're waterproof matches in the handle. What are you, Grambo? <laughs> that's very good, Grambo. Is this really necessary? There's a Persian proverb. Fortune is infatuated with the efficient. The Persians. Persians. He's quoting Persian proverbs now. The guy's all over the map. Bigger than a bread basket? It's over one million square yards, which makes it almost 10 million square feet. It's pretty big. That's nothing. <laughs> There's 1,200 acres 
that abuts this property which I just repatriated. Repatriated? Yeah, it used to belong to Washoe Indians. Hold it. See that over there? That's a Widowmaker. Very dangerous. You must steer clear of those. Widowmaker? Yeah, those branches give way and that limb falls on you. It'll make your wife your widow. But then again, there are worse ways of going. There's a good way? The traditional Native American way. When you know you're on your way out, you just walk off into the woods. Something nice about that. No panicking, no hospitals. Just a calm walk off into the woods. Walk off into the woods by themselves, huh? Sounds lonely. It's called dying. Not exactly an opportunity to spend quality time with other people. I remember when your grandmother died. Mm. It was awful. The hospital, the doctors, the tests. Oh, the tests. All a poor woman wanted was peace. And all they ever did to her was this. Well, why don't you come back to Los Angeles with me? I mean, you haven't been there in a long time. It'd mean a lot to Mom. Wouldn't work. Your mom and I are not exactly close since your grandmother died. Why don't you come back to Los Angeles with me anyways? Maybe things would be different this time. I can't leave you here. I have to take care of the land. Look at this baby. Over 200 years old and she didn't die of natural causes. That's why I brought you out here. Show it to you. To make you understand the bond with it. <laughs> Jack, uh, as you can see, I'm not a bonder. I'm a lawyer. It's important not to define yourself by what you do, but by who you are. Well, that's a good thing. Because the last major case I tried was a lawsuit against a laxative company. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's hit it. More walking? What else? You know what? Get out of the trees. Are we lost? Not at all. You just uh, head south, and then you'll hit a stream, and then you'll hit the road. Ah. Uh. This looks like a good spot. Why don't you just uh, sit and wait here? I got to move my bowels. Out here? What's that matter? Can't defecate unless you got a magazine to read? All you got to do is dig a hole six inches deep and work on your aim. Then you get a smooth stick or a stone instead of toilet paper. Then bury everything. Man's been squatting in the woods for thousands of years. Yeah, spare me the details. I'll just wait right here. Surrounded by nothingness. The ancient Kabbalists believe that nothingness is the barrier that confronts the human intellect. Yeah, I'm sure they did. You know, if I was a suspicious person, Jack, uh, I would be suspicious that you're gonna leave me out in the woods. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Jack? Jack! Jack, really? What did that psychopath say about walking south? He walked south, along with the water, and then, and then the river. Jack! Jack, this isn't funny. I don't know how to get back. I'm from the city! Jack! I wasn't a boy scout!
grows on the south side of the trees. No, 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 it grows on the north side of the trees. And the sun comes up in the, in the east and lays in the west. Which way? Which way? It's east. The sun. Which way is west? Where's the sun? Jack, this is funny. I'm claustrophobic. Which way is the sun? never convict me ever. The jury would never find me guilty. But just tell them what the old man did to me, and they say he deserved it. He needed a killing. <sighs> what do you say? Something about bonding with the land, huh? Uh, maybe this is just his way of cramming nature down my throat. Trying to kill me. <laughs> and if I ever get out of them, alive, Remind me not to come back! Alive. You know, I got rained on. I took an involuntary dip in the creek, and I got chased by a wolf. There aren't any wolves in California, sad to say. It's only quite an adventure. Sleep well? You have any idea what kind of night I had? You know what I think? I think you're ready for a competency hearing. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't care what you think. Yeah, I know you don't. I know you don't care. You never did care. You didn't care when I was a kid and you don't care now. Why should things be different? You're complaining to the wrong person. Oh, really? Then why is it that I can count on one hand how many times I've seen you since I was 10? You're breaking my heart. You are the most selfish person I've ever met in my life. I'm lucky to be alive right now. That's the first spiritual thing I've heard you say. Oh, please. Don't lecture me, Saint Jack. Not after leaving me in the woods all night. If you're going to try to kill me, I wish you'd just go ahead and do it and get it over with. I can't stand the suspense. I'm trying to kill you? Oh. That's the last thing I'm trying to do. How did you feel last night? How do you feel now? What 
hell are you talking about, you raving lunatic? Listen. Last night you felt alive. You feel alive now. Last night you felt fear. Right now you're experiencing anger. Maybe for the first time you feel alive. Kill you. Hell. I just saved your miserable life. Where are you going? For a walk, you damn ingrate. Jack, wait a minute. Leave me alone. What do you mean that I'm complaining to the wrong person about not getting to see you when I was growing up? Don't ask any questions you don't want the answers to. But Mom? Mom kept me from seeing you? What do you want me to do? Regurgitate an answer into your mouth like I was feeding a little bird? You want answers? Go find your own worms. Right now, I'm busy. back. Enjoy your breakfast, Jack. Okay, thank you, Jack. Gwen, yeah. my grandfather ditched me in the woods last night. Uh-huh. Kept having this whole Blair Witch thing going through my head. Look at me. He really ditched you, didn't he? Scouts on her. Good for him. And he made you breakfast after he ditched you, huh? Yeah, yeah see, that's a whole other thing with this guy. Like 10 minutes ago, I was screaming and yelling at him, and now I just... I just really need some sleep. You need a shower and a change of clothes. A shower. A hot shower. Yeah. Your grandfather doesn't have hot water. But you do, right? You have a shower I could use, right? Please, please. Yours? Noah. Nice to meet you. There you are. Good baggy. Yeah. Good. Thanks for the big clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Noah's dad? Well, um. I've been asking the same question since he was born. In fact, those clothes are all that's left of him. Why'd you keep his clothes? Well, you know, I, I thought maybe someday there might be this L.A. lawyer who got ditched in the woods by his grandpa and used my hot shower and he might need a change of clothes. Okay? It's just me and Noah around here these days. Must be hard. 
What? Raising a kid in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. It must be hard for you. What? I'm not raising a kid. I'm not living in the middle of nowhere. Mom, can Matt take me fishing? Well, I don't know if Matt has time, sweetheart. Do you? For my buddy Noah, of course I've got the time. Let's go. Are you afraid of fishies? Matt Fleming, afraid of fishies? Ha! I laugh at the face of fear. What's that? Oh. Come on, buddy, let's go. Where's the creek? Down this way? Yeah. My grandpa took me fishing once when I was your age. I don't get to see my grandpa a lot. Me either. Hey, Noah. You like living in the country? Uh-huh. I'm not doing something right here. What am I doing? No, you got a gentleman line that makes the fish think the worm's still alive. You think the fishes think the worm's still alive? How's that? You're getting good at this. Does your mommy like living in the country? Uh-huh. Want to move in with us? Oh, no, I'm a city boy. Where's the city? It's a long ways away from here. This is nice. What's the biggest fish you ever caught? Never caught a fish. You never caught a fish? You just go fishing a lot? I'm thinking I'm gonna have to get me one of these and drive around Los Angeles in my suit. Yeah. I think I'll win all my cases on intimidation alone. That's Luke's truck. Oh, my car's ready. Well, hopefully Luke's got the fuel pump relay. He's putting that pup in. Yeah. And also, I had a friend of mine overnight me my keys. Overnight, huh? Yeah. Well, that's good then. Going back to L.A. Yeah. Back to the big old city. Yeah. yeah. I'm out of here. Well, I guess... I guess this is goodbye. Yeah. Well, look, if you ever get down to Los Angeles, you can always call me. Yeah. If you ever come back up here... <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah. No, oh, you know, and, and thanks so much for the clothes. I really appreciate it. I'll, I'll get them cleaned and I'll have them sent back to you. Now, why don't you just keep them? Okay. Yeah. I hope it works. Yeah, me too. Good afternoon, Luke. Afternoon. Done yet? You bet. Right. Now, I just have to come back tomorrow and try again with the right part. The right part? Yeah. You didn't get the right part? What about my keys? I don't have your keys. I had them overnighted to your place. <laughs> we, we don't have overnight in Yoder, lover boy. Night in Yoder. You mean I have to stay here another night? Yeah. How did you get in my car? Well, it's unlocked. It's unlocked. Where the hell are the papers?
called a sweat lodge. Washo used it as part of a bonding ritual. <coughs> These are my friends, Daryl, Marvin, John. We just closed a deal. Thought we should celebrate with a sweat. What kind of a deal? Well, I arranged to turn over to the Washaw Nation 1,429 acres of their land. For free? You can't do that. Sure, I kind of just did. Look, Jack, we should really talk about this, okay? You should strip. Come again? Very therapeutic. What? You overdressed for this holy place. Look, guys, I'm not going to take my clothes off, okay? I can't discuss anything with you unless you strip. You're a member of a health club, aren't you? Well, this is like a spiritual health club. <laughs> Good one, Jack. Thank you, Derek. Look, did you or did you not read the papers that were in my briefcase? Didn't have to. Why not? Well, they were the same as the last ones your mother tried to serve me with. What are you talking about? Did she tell you that she tried to get my money before? No. Well, it works for me. It forces us to keep in touch every few years. Jack, you have to respond to them. Not unless I'm served. But you have them. You admitted to taking them out of my briefcase and reading them. Well, actually, if you recall, I never admitted to going into your briefcase or having read the papers. Did I? See? Well, Jack, if you don't sign the papers, you can be forced into a competency hearing. Well, I'm, I'm sure I can find some eager young attorney to file enough postponements and delays so that this thing will drag out until the end of the next century. Sure you won't strip and have a sweat? You crazy. It's my grandson. Health club, huh? Many to mental health club. Charles, what happened to your car? The same thing that's gonna happen to your car if we don't get out of here right now. Come on, we don't have time to talk about it. He's coming. Is it one of those fires? I'll tell you about it in a minute. Let's go. My grandfather's crazy and he's coming. Hi, Vicky. How you doing? Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi. I brought your key. You know there is no overnight service to this town? Yeah, I know that. We gotta go. We gotta go. Wait, seriously. Wait, wait, wait. We gotta get out of here. Well, I'll just tell you in a minute. Let's go. Yeah, seriously. Listen, listen. The big bad wolf. Trust me. Why can't we just park it over? I don't want to walk. By the way, hide your keys. Trust me. What? Why can't we drive the car up to the house? Well, trust me. It's a lot safer where it is, I promise. What are you doing in those clothes? Hiking. You hike? When did that happen? Listen, you guys cannot leave me out here. We'll have to stay here. The last hotel is 60 miles back. Yeah, but first I have to ask Jack if it's okay. I can't believe we have to beg your grandfather to let us stay. Yeah, I would have thought he wanted company. He made me sleep in the woods last night. He did? Just relax and let me handle the negotiations. Negotiations? <laughs> Charles? Why don't you speak to him first? Jack. You still here? Can I come in? Knock yourself out. Eastern Wisdom. The Journey of Self-Discovery. I Ching. It's pronounced Yi Jing. So, what's the story outside with the poster children from Hugo Boss? Yeah, they're friends of mine from Los Angeles. They uh, thought they would come out here and rescue me. You feel safe? No, not really. You know, I can't really go anywhere until my car is fixed and I'm only assuming that you're not going to give me back my fuel pump relay. Correct. So, I thought I would ask if they could stay. Stay here? In my house? Not everyone is welcome in my home. Why not? If I treat everyone the same, then I treat no one special. Oh, Jack, if you make my friend stay on the porch tonight, they're never going to talk to me again. 
Well, I guess I wouldn't be St. Jack if I said no, would I? Thanks, Jack. However, there are some rules. Rules? He's agreed to let us stay, but there are a few house rules. The guys have to stay in one room, the girls have to stay in another. This is ridiculous. And because there's no running water or electricity, everybody's responsible for watching the oil lamps and for drawing your own water from the well out back. And last but not least, keeping the outhouse clean. Outhouse? Did he say outhouse? This will be fun, right? Outhouse. This is the land that cellular technology forgot. It's impossible. It's the best phone money can buy. It's got to work. You just promised me one thing. Tomorrow, when your car is fixed, we will leave here. I'm just trying to figure out what to do. It's just a splinter, isn't it? It's just a really, really big splinter. Is this, is this okay? Ow! Here, tea tree oil. It's a natural antibiotic. Thank you, Mr. Green. It's a beauty. <laughs> okay, who's gonna pull this out? I'll do it. No, Vicky's gonna do it. No, I'm not gonna do it. I already tried. You know, I'm really not qualified. Vicky, would you just get it together and take it out? Let me handle this. Hey, no, whoa. No, 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 no. I'm gonna handle it. Relax. Ow! Ow! Occupational hazard of using an outhouse. Good night, everyone. A nice muscle tone, by the way. City slipping. Hey. Good morning. Hi, how are you? The door was locked. Yeah, you know what? I must have done that last night. Force of habit, you know. So I hear your car problems aren't quite over. Well, the Yoda rumor mill is still as accurate as ever. Why are we whispering? Well, uh, I, I didn't want to wake up my grandpa. <sighs> oh. So you're, uh, you're stuck here for a little longer. Want to introduce me to your friend? Uh, Gwen Blitzer, Linda Stewart, Linda Stewart, Gwen Blitzer. Gwen, 
uh, delivers groceries to my grandfather. How charming. Nice to meet you. Likewise. You know, you can just leave that there and I'll take care of it. That's okay. I know where Mr. Green likes things. She's very helpful, isn't she? Her middle name wouldn't happen to be Ralph, would it? Bye, y'all. It's not what you're thinking. Well, Ellie May seemed a little confused about it, too. We're leaving. Linda. Linda. After you get your car fixed and you're back in L.A., just give me a call. I think I left some CDs at your place. Linda. Vicki, will you talk to her, please? Honey, get yourself some new CDs. Funny. It's over, man. Charles. Charles, let's go. Call me when you get back to the city. We'll do cocktails. Did you love her? Wow, what a declaration that was. Mm. All right. Maybe I needed some more time. You're 30 years old. You've been dating women for 15 years. If you don't know what you want in a relationship after dating 15 years, then how much difference will a little more time make? What if I do know what I want? And you'd be a damn fool not to go after it with both hands. Jack! Jack, you in there? Hey, Jack! What are you doing here? What's it look like? Stripping. If your mom could see us now, she'd probably have us both locked up. Yeah, well, this is pretty off the charts. Oh. Hmm. When I was in Japan, I met a fellow who was a backpacker. Every weekend, rain or shine, he'd strap 40 pounds of equipment on his back and go walk in the woods. I asked him what he was running away from. Why he had such a need to escape reality. What did he say? He asked me what was more real, a nine to five job or a walk in the woods. So who taught you how to build a sweat lodge? The washoes? Washo. Washo. No, it's my old son. <coughs> so what is wrong with you anyway? Bunk cancer. I guess I got it from smoking all those Cuban cigars I sneaked across the Canadian border on Iowa 
was working 80 hours a week and neglecting my family. What did the doctor say? What can he say? And mom doesn't know. What purpose would that serve? Well, I think she has the right to know. There you go again. Trying to turn dying into a community event. What happened between you and mom? When your grandmother died, I guess I died. I lived for her and for work. And after she was gone, the work just wasn't that important to me anymore. Next thing I knew, three months went by after the funeral, and I hadn't left the house. They told me it was a breakdown or something. So I quit my law practice, sold everything I had, and hit the road. I guess I was trying to find something to take her place. Something to care about again. Didn't you care about me? Of course I did. I wanted to come back from the road, spend time with you, watch you grow. But your mother didn't really want me to. I didn't know. Can't blame her, I suppose. She and I both made our choices. That's what we're here for, on the planet, to make choices. And sometimes, if we work hard enough, we make good ones. So what would you think about me maybe inviting Gwen over for dinner tonight? I think that would be a good choice. Okay, now we get to the next part of the bonding ceremony. You said that there's another part to the bonding ritual. Yeah, here's the cherry on the cake. Isn't this great? Oh, it's terrific. Are we finished bonding yet? I met a woman in Sweden once who in the dead of winter would go into a hot tub, jump out naked, and go roll in the snow, and then go right back into the hot tub. Oh, that's great. You got any pictures? <laughs> uh, this is just great. <laughs> Your grandmother would have liked this place. We always talked about doing it, leaving the city, buying a house in the woods. We just never got around to doing it in time. Oh. Why'd you wait so long after Grandma died to buy the place? You want the BS answer or the truth? Truth. I didn't have the guts. Your grandmother died, and I'm sure I didn't want to stay in the city anymore. But I was afraid of what would happen if I went and bought a place like this. What were you afraid would happen? It was the last dream your grandmother and I shared together. What if I didn't like it? I was afraid that it would be like losing the last bit of her. So I went traveling instead for 20 years all over the world. You know what I found? What's that? My house in the woods. Okay. Yeah. Dust. <laughs> well, why don't you take a walk over to Gwen's and invite her to dinner? <clears throat> I got something I need to take care of. Sure you're okay? Of course I'm sure.
Say it or should I? Say what? That I'm an idiot. I came to apologize about before. Good. You apologized. Linda's gone. She, uh, she left me. Okay. So now what? Do you need like a shoulder to cry on or do you need me to give you advice how to get her back or what? No. What do you want from me, Matt? Really? Why are you so mad at me? Nothing even happened between us. <laughs> That's what Noah's dad said before he left. Why are you always so upset? Nothing happened. And I found out he took my money, and I was pregnant. That's an unfair comparison. I can't just smile and laugh and get all interested in you. And then just pretend like nothing happened. I can't. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want you to be like me. I mean, after the last few days, I don't think I even want to be like myself anymore, you know? Well, why don't you do something? Stop wasting your time. Do you think your grandfather will mind if I bring Noah? Nah, I don't think he's eaten any children lately, so it shouldn't be a problem. How about seven? Matt? Sweat lodge, something's wrong. There's too much smoke. time are they giving me? Some. How much? None. Dear God, an honest man. Listen, I want you to contact Daryl Shaney. You already met him. He's the elder of the Washoe Indian Reservation. I made out a deed, turning the land over to them. Get it to him. The place is all theirs now. I thought you made me the executor. Oh, well, I suppose that's true. What are you gonna do? 
Give it to the washer. Give it to your mom. Keep it yourself. Jack, you said so much. You acted like you believed in so much. Why didn't you torch the sweat lodge? Hey. Did you stop believing, Jack? Hey. It's my lodge. I'm going to take it with me. Huh. Why are you so mad at me? I tried so hard not to be scared of dying. I was hurting. I went to the hospital. Drowning man clutches at a straw, any straw. After many years of soul searching, I have come to the conclusion that dying with your principles can be a pain in the Watch. I'm not going back. So you're gonna keep the house? I guess you're a lot more like your mom than I thought. I'm not talking about the house. I don't care about the house. I don't care about the land either. I'm not going back to being who I was. And I'm not gonna let you either. I'm staying right here. This isn't a field trip we can take together. I know. Don't you get it? I don't want you here. Well, I'm still not going. It's taken me 20 years to become a part of your life. I'm not gonna let you push me out again. I'm staying right here, whether you like it or not. I bet I last long. I sign myself out. You can do that? They don't know it yet. Where are you going? I figured I'd go for a walk. Too ostentatious? No. 
perfect. You really have to do this? Show Elder. Yeah. Jack, when did you stay? Uh, at least until Mom and Dad get here. Don't tempt me. Besides, your dad voted for Nixon. I never forgive him. Can I ask you something? The last couple days at the hospital. Are you being really brave? Or have you just been acting? I was scared out of my mind. If lawyering doesn't work out for you, you can always go into the theater. Actually, I was considering Gentleman Farmer. Now that's a fine job. Are you okay? Happy. I don't know why, though. Don't ask why. Okay. Keep it sharp.
died with dignity and honor. He died in the old Indian way. He walked out into the woods, sat down and prepared for death. And if in fact, the Spirit Father has pity on him, he will become young again in the new world. Not everyone is welcome in my home. If I treat everyone the same, then I treat no one special. This is the first time the three of you have been together in 10 years. Once they were stars. If you want to blame me for breaking up this band, that's fine. We're supposed to pretend that didn't happen. But now it's time to be... I'm just tired of it being my fault. I think your brother is too. Family. Academy Award winner Mercedes Rule. American Idol's Brooke White. A Hallmark Movies and Mysteries presentation of Family Reunion. Premiere Sunday at 9.